Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. COVID-19 continues to have an impact on our community, and HCC is keeping up with the latest information and adapting to this fluid situation. Today, we're joined by Dr. Kurt Ewan, our Vice Chancellor of Strategic Planning and Institutional Effectiveness, and Dr. Shante Grays, Vice Chancellor for Student Services here at Houston Community College. They're both going to give us an update on spring 2021. We'll start with Dr. Ewan. Good afternoon, Dr. Ewan. Unfortunately, COVID cases are one once again on the rise here in Houston, and they've had an impact on our service area and I guess our operations as well. Maybe you can bring us up to speed. Todd, we have a, a team of people that meet on a regular basis. At, at, that includes a group of people who are watching all the data around the country, regionally and across Texas. Um, and so we keep an eye on that basically to make decisions about what we're going to do um, because we wanna keep our faculty, our students, our staff safe and uh, minimize whatever risk there might be to their health uh, and keep them on off campus if we can. And if, but also prioritizing the need to help get our students uh, the education that they need to move on with their lives, right? We want to keep our students on course uh, with, their, with their college plans and their career goals. No. Have there been any changes going into spring 2021 as the students are getting ready to go back into classes? Yes, there has. So we, we noticed the spike and, and that, you know, the post-holiday spike is continued to grow. It's expected to grow for a little while longer. Um, so we made the decision to um, to do a couple of things. So remember, there are four different modalities that we have. Online anytime, online on a schedule, flex campus, and lab-based. So I want to go through each one of them because each one is a little different. Online anytime, that means you log in and when, when it's convenient for you, right, as the title says. That is going off as planned. That's like a traditional online class. If you signed up for online on a schedule, what that means is you need to sign into your class at the designated time that you've selected when you registered. Those classes are fully remote. You will never need to come to campus for those. Flex Campus was designed to create the possibility for some students to be in the classroom. So we've made the decision not to hold any of those in, in person all of them will be remote until after spring break at the earliest. So we're gonna to continue to watch the numbers. And as we get closer, um, we will begin the process of, of determining whether or not it makes sense for us to come back. And then we'll make some decisions about what we're gonna do with those flex campus modalities. Lab-based courses, um, certainly in the sciences and in, in the liberal arts, and, um, and a couple of COE programs. So uh, Global Energy and the Fine Arts, um, performance-based fine arts programs. Those will, will remain remote. So that the decision there is based upon whether or not it's essential for the student to be able to have hands-on training. The vast majority of our Center of Excellence programs, all of the workforce programs, and there's an entire list that has been distributed today um, makes clear which of those courses will continue to meet in person um, um, starting in January. So um, students need to connect, make sure that they, they know what they've scheduled for. Um, so essentially, if you're taking Flex Campus online on the schedule, online anytime, you're going to be remote through spring break. We apologize for that, especially for the people who had hoped to get on campus. But, um, you know, we need to make sure that you're safe and the faculty and staff are safe. So it sounds like, as you mentioned, the workforce courses, it's hard to teach welding online. So those yeah. students are going to get a chance to go back and continue their study. And so the, so the courses that need to be hands-on, and I imagine the classes for these lab-based courses are still going to be in very small, um, very small uh, sessions where there's only a few students uh, at, at each time and more sessions. Is that correct? For the most part, um, some of our welding labs, you mentioned welding, some of those welding labs have booths for 20 or 30 students. If a student's in a welding class, they've got a, a shield on, they've got a gown on, they're in a separate room for themselves. 
especially if it's a if it's a if it's a, a practice session that so we've created um, um, ways to get students in and out so they're not interacting with each other. Um, but generally speaking, courses that are in person, all the PPE is required um, and and there is social distancing built in. We've been doing this since last summer. Right. And have gotten really good at being able to do this safely. I guess the big question would be for students as they may say, well, I, I'm not just sure exactly if, if I'm going to have a lab on campus or not. Will you be notifying them by email? Do they need to check with their instructor? How the, will they find out if there's a question going on? What would you suggest? One, I would, I would have them review the, the material that was distributed today for their consideration. Two is as they're getting closer to time, they need to check in with their faculty member. Right, and then also um, we're gonna talk more about the virtual lobby because uh, that's available for students to ask mm -hmm. questions before. Dr. Ewan, I wanna ask you this. Um, you know, we went into this over now 10, 10 months ago. Right. In the, did you in any of your mind anticipate this would last this long with COVID? Because I know when we first went away, I was thinking maybe a couple of weeks, a month at the most, we'll be back at the end of April. And here we are in 2021 in January. I can remember some things that I said in meetings at the end of February that are, are just now completely wrong. I can remember saying uh, the chances of us having to close everything is not gonna happen. Uh, we will probably be closing a campus here and there. Right. And, and within a couple of weeks, we shut the entire thing down. Uh, so no, uh, none of us really expected this. No one expected it for 10 months. And the reality is, is that we're gonna be wearing face masks yeah. Probably into the fall. Right. Um, it's going to be a while yet. Um, so everybody needs to continue to be patient and just know that we're doing everything that we can to make sure our students, our faculty and our staff are safe and that the work that we're here for continues in terms of getting people educated and getting them into the jobs that they desire and keeping them on track. Um, I know you reach out to the students from time to time for surveys to get a gauge yeah. on how they're feeling. What are some of the overall feelings you're getting from students about wanting to go back to campuses? Everybody watches the news and, and they see the problems that, that emerge as kind of um, marginal kinds of events that happen across the country where somebody's asked to put a face mask on and they go ballistic. And so people are nervous about that. Yeah. Um, and so they ask lots of questions about how that happens. Faculty ask a lot of questions about that. I can tell you that we have not had the first problem like that since we started this. Um, um, the numbers have gotten really good. Our staff and our faculty and, and students have all been really cooperative in coming to class, if they're coming in, coming to class with their mask and making sure that, that they're keeping their partner safe, their, their, their other classmates safe by by social distancing and doing what's required. We've been talking to Dr. Kurt Ewan, our Vice Chancellor of Strategy Planning and Institutional Effectiveness. We're gonna talk with you more in a few minutes and we're also gonna bring on Dr. Shante Graves with Student Services. We'll talk about the online virtual lobby and that how that's been helping our students. All that and more coming up on the topic. Stay tuned, we'll be back after this. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Roll over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. I love teaching at HCC. I love helping students. With college credits. With scholarships and financial aid. Training them for life-changing careers. Come learn with us. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to the topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis. If you're watching us on the cable channel, you can find us on social media, follow us on Facebook, 
under Houston Community College. Also, jump on over to our YouTube channel. We've got a, a vast array of programming, very robust programming that you can find by finding Houston Community College on Facebook. Subscribe to the channel and you'll get notifications when shows like this are posted. Uh, we've been talking today with Dr. Kurt Ewan, our Vice Chancellor of Strategic Planning and Institutional Effectiveness. And we're also now joined by Dr. Shante Grays, our Vice Chancellor for Student Services here at Houston Community College. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Grays. How are you? Hello, Todd. I am well. I'm excited about the start of the semester. Um, and we're raring to go in student services. Well, I know you've been raring to go and I know you've had staff working over the break because we were still, I know going into the spring, especially at the end of last semester, a lot of students had questions and you kept staff over the break and we're answering those questions to make sure we can get those students enrolled. That's right, Todd. So during the holidays, we, we recognized a, an opportunity to provide support for our students who um, had questions who are still continuing to register for the spring semester. So we had a team of dedicated student services staff who volunteered um, their time, um, took some sacrifice for their holiday break so that they can provide that assistance. Um, and the response was overwhelming. Each day we averaged 900 students um, in that live Zoom lobby seeking support either with financial aid or with advising or just placement and general information questions. So we were happy to, to be able to provide that support for our students. Have you had to increase or adjust your hours since this, we're now getting back into the, the spring semester uh, for student services? So we have, uh, we are in the middle of what we call peak registration uh, and, and recognizing that we have to first accommodate students um, in a virtual setting and then uh, provide some level of support on campus uh, to uh, our students who may have a, a need to, to meet with someone face to face. So what we're doing, um, we're splitting the, the baby, if you will. So we have our live Zoom lobby um, where students uh, can access that directly from our homepage. Um, it is available Monday and Tuesday from 8 to 630. And on Wednesdays and Thursdays are the late days um, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then Fridays from eight to five. Um, I also wanna share that we have had, last Saturday we had our first on-campus um, registration event. We are also doing that again this Saturday. It's the last big push um, and, and students can go to our website and identify those locations, but we're open from nine to one and we're encouraging those who may have the need to come to campus to do so. Um, but we also have um, live Zoom support on Saturday as well. So for those who are not comfortable, um, or who do not have a need necessarily to come to campus, they may um, access uh, student services through that live virtual Zoom lobby on Saturday. I know when we had these live registration on events on campuses before, um, there were a lot of people there. Uh, you, sometimes you had a long line. It got very busy. It was always people moving around. I would imagine when people go back to the HCC campuses now, things are going to look very different. Absolutely. And I think for, it's important for our students to understand that um, everything we're doing, these protocols that we're setting in place is really um, for their best interest. It's to protect them and their families, um, as well as our staff and our faculty and everyone who's, who's working um, in that environment. So we're going to ask them to do a few things. Um, there'll be a pre-screening that each uh, individual coming to campus would have to complete. Um, we'll have staff available to provide that assistance and, and how to access that pre-screening. Um, and there, that pre-screening will help determine um, if the individuals are indeed, um, if there's any threat um, around um, either safety, if, there's, if they have any slight temperature. Um, our, our staff and our, our screeners have been trained to advise students to come back at a later time. Um, again, it's not to be uh, a barrier, um, obviously, but we do have to take those extra precautions to ensure that uh, the safety of everyone on campus. You know, a lot of students wait till the last minute to sign up because they're waiting for a paycheck uh, to, to get payday so they could make that payment to get started in college. Um, and I know you have a lot of ways of, of helping students, financial aid, scholarships. Maybe you can talk about that because don't let finances keep you from registering. That's right, Todd. And I think um, I will have to acknowledge um, the support of the administration on extending our installment plan. Um, students will receive a notification um, starting tomorrow 
on the extended payment window because COVID has brought on um, so many unforeseen challenges. We have students who've been impacted by uh, loss of wages and loss of employment. Um, and we recognize that and we value that. So we are extending that opportunity and that courtesy to our students to allow more time to make smaller payments so that they are um, maintaining their enrollment, but also ensuring that they're getting the classes that they need and they're making their payments um, um, that are uh, suitable and, and obviously within budget and reasonable for them. You know, another thing too with HCC, we're a little different because we have year round enrollment. And if someone can't make it for the spring, I know you have a second start, we're still gonna have that. And there are other ways that they can enroll in shorter terms to make sure they get the hour credits they need. Maybe you can tell us about some of that. Absolutely. So we are uh, in the process uh, while we're registering for spring, um, we know that that semester classes start on Monday. Um, it's not too late to register. We have a second start, which begins February 16th. Um, so there's still plenty of opportunity. Again, um, those who may have an interest or those who are wanting to come back for retooling or return, um, we're encouraging them to take advantage of this opportunity. Come to campus on Saturday, um, take that pre-screening that pre -screening COVID uh, exam um, that would allow them to get the uh, support and the assistance needed or visit us through the virtual lobby. Um, again, we have a team of advisors and enrollment staff and financial aid um, available and ready to answer questions and assist with the registration process. I know you also reach out to students to get an idea of what they're thinking. Um, and I asked Dr. Ewan earlier, what are some of the opinions and, and some of the, the things you're getting from students after hearing from them? What's their biggest concern when they're reaching out to you? you no, know, Todd, I will say um, I'm probably shouldn't necessarily share it right now, but I, we have a, a student resources um, Facebook page, it's Eagle to Eagle, and I'm one of the moderators. And I, I will say I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, number one, students have adjusted. Um, they have uh, transitioned um, very comfortably um, in a remote environment. They've expressed that. Um, they're now reaching out more uh, intensively to, uh, to either their faculty or to student services support to ask questions. Um, this was a, a shock to us all. Uh, again, yeah. we did not anticipate being um, in this situation almost a year later, um, yet we've seen our students persevere and they are in fact um, adjusting to this new normal. Once again, uh, the virtual lobby went live this past summer and it's been a big hit. I know getting that launched off the ground was a humongous task to get it up and running. But uh, obviously, if stu are students getting more warmed up to dealing with uh, student services virtually as opposed to in person? They are. And, and I will say, let me just take a moment to, to give a hand uh, clap and uh, kudos to um, our student services deans at each of the colleges and their teams who have who thought um, on, on the heels of their feet and were very quick to respond and provide that type of support. Uh, but we, we are seeing increased student traffic. We are seeing students um, asking questions and taking advantage of uh, the live Zoom lobby. Um, although I will share with students, it's, it, is, it is not fail proof, right? And uh, in the middle of peak registration um, is no different than uh, what we'd experienced when we were on campus. Um, so we are asking students to be patient. We're working. Um, we have uh, all of our student services staff now on online, all hands on deck as it, it normally is during peak registration. Um, but we have a lot of students who are requesting um, information and they have questions and our staff is working as quickly as possible to, to respond to their, to their needs and to their inquiries through that, side, that live Zoom lobby. Dr. Gray, stick around. We're gonna bring you back in the next segment. We're also gonna be joined again by Dr. Ewan. Um, stick around on the topic because we've been talking about what's going on now at HCC going into the spring. We'll talk a little bit about the future with both Dr. Gray's and Dr. Ewan coming up right after this on the topic. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. 
HCC. For everyone, anytime, anyway. All right, so today we're talking COVID. How we're, is HCC dealing with things going into spring 2021? We're joined today by Dr. Kurt Ewan, Vice Chancellor of Strategic Planning and Institutional Effectiveness, and Dr. Shante Grays, Vice Chancellor for Student Services. Once again, thank you both for being here. Dr. Grays, I wanna ask you, because I'd asked Dr. Ewan this earlier, when we went into this COVID situation, what, a little over 10 months ago, um, did you anticipate it would be this long or did you have any idea that we'd be out of this going into 2021? Todd, you know, Kurt and I were just discussing this. It's been almost a year that we um, had a similar recording. He and I were both in the same space and never uh, in my wildest dreams would I think that I'd be having this the same conversation um, in my living room, um, talking about how we're addressing COVID. Um, it is certainly um, unprecedented, but despite that, um, I think it's we've been able to be um, very flexible and nimble and, and yeah. you know, it, it is what it is at this point, right? And both of you are on the COVID task force. Um, that was formed very early in this. Um, tell it, just to give an audience an idea, the COVID task force, how often have you guys met? Um, is it a is daily meeting? Because I And how big of a, of a group is the COVID task force? Dr. Ewan, maybe you can take this one. We call it the incident command team. Um, and we started meeting at the end of February as the pandemic, uh, so as the pandemic started to expand, um, we met many times six days a week, sometimes seven days a week uh, for quite a while certainly five days a week um, through good part of the summer or into the summer. And then we backed it off to twice a week. Uh, we continue to meet twice a week. There's a sub subgroup of us. And if there is a case on campus that meets um, to discuss communication, what needs to go out, who needs to communi communicate it, what do we need to do to that location in terms of cleaning? Initially, the group was a little bigger. We scaled it back. Um, currently, it's just over 35 people. And um, at the height, it was probably in the 50s. Let me ask you this, um, because I've been asked this question before. Uh, you know, look at Houston ISD. They are, are back in session. They're meeting face-to-face -face with students. They're allowing parents the opportunity to send their kids to school for face-to-face -face instruction. People may ask, why aren't colleges like HCC doing this uh, when we've got the, uh, the school districts that are sending kids to class? Let me just say that uh, the first thing to know is that online instruction is not easy. Um, anybody who has thought, well, I'll just take an online class because I can take the course in my pajamas, um, doesn't really understand the challenge that they pose. I know for me personally, it's really challenging. And I think the younger the student is, the less likely they are to be successful. Um, there are lots of predictions that because of the shutdown in the school districts, that many of those students may be behind grade level for quite a while. Um, so we will be experiencing the pandemic for years to come yeah. as students continue to pick their, their skills back up. So at the school district level, there's a realization that students need the kind of in-person um, connection that, um, that as you get older, you may not necessarily need. But I can tell you, Online classes are challenging for our students and we're aware of that. We want to get them back on campus as soon as we can, um, but it, it's, uh, it's a little more uh, challenging. Um, I will say that since early summer, many of our workforce programs have been face-to-face. -face. They've been in the labs, they've been in the, on the campuses the entire time. That's true for many community colleges around the country. And uh, it's essential because it's a hands-on skill. You know, you can't learn to be a, a nurse or a phlebotomist or something like that unless you, you're actually in there doing it. Yeah. Or if you want to be a fireman you, or whatever, you need to be in there. And I know you've been addressing that with deciding what labs are going to be back in yeah. session going into the spring, the ones that are the workforce are going back. Yeah. But you, you mentioned earlier the fine arts labs, uh, they may be uh, going online because they fit online in a better way, I imagine. They, they figured it out. Um, so I'll tell you that science should probably be best done in a laboratory setting with the scientists, the professor in the room with you. But if it's possible for us to do this and for students to learn what they need to learn and be successful and still be safe, 
we'd prefer to do that. So that's what we're doing. Dr. Gray's um, online instruction, our students, I know I was hearing, uh, uh, seeing it in, in social media. They were having a hard time when we first, and we went online so quickly. Are, is it leveling out? Are they getting uh, more used to it when it comes to our student body? I would say yes, but to to Dr. Ewan's point earlier, it's it's difficult, right? And each with each uh, fall semester or each term, we get a new set of students. Um, and some um, who are learning um, virtually for the very first time. Um, so technology can be a little bit scary and a little intimidating, um, let alone the self-paced and self-directed um, education, right, when you're working from home. So uh, what we have, uh, I can say that we've got, you know, excellent resources in our tutoring, um, online tutoring available to support students. Again, um, we're encouraging students to, to really make that connection with their advisor and, and more specifically with their faculty member um, if they're finding that they're having challenges um, navigating the, the platform or there's questions about um, understanding the curriculum. I think we are what we've seen now is a greater participation um, and students are, are taking advantage of the opportunity to connect with someone to express their concerns. Um, again, it's not easy, we do know, but we are seeing um, some of our returning students um, build a level of confidence um, and actually support for um, online learning. Online on a schedule or online anytime, what are you finding students are more uh, most popular? What's most popular among students going into the spring? I think it, it varies, Todd. So there are, again, and it's, you've got some students who intuitively um, are self-paced, they're self-directed, they're driven, and they, uh, they do that well. They thrive in that kind of environment. Um, but a great majority of our students um, like the consistency. They like to be able to um, structure their day. They have families, they work. Um, so having a, a schedule that's online where they're able to meet with their faculty, engage with their peers um, is really the preferred method. Well, face-to-face -face, obviously in person is the preferred uh, delivery method, but students we're finding are much more comfortable um, with a set schedule um, and being able and uh, having that set meeting time as well. Dr. Ewan, I'm going to ask you this, um, looking at uh, the future as we're headed into spring 2021 and beyond once the vaccines are out, has this dramatically changed forever the way we'll be delivering education? Well, obviously online isn't going to be going anywhere. No, and I, I you know, I think oftentimes online has been used as a, uh, a gap filler. Right, we've got more students who want classes. Let's add an online section, um, almost so that that the model, the standard bearer, was the face-to-face -face class, and the online instruction was um, if you couldn't do that, you're a working professional or something like that, or you, it, it, it saved you some time. I, I think online instruction is going to become an integral part of every course that there will be some web-based component. Many of our courses had not gone there a year ago now. Um, so that will be forever different. I, I think there's a, other things that, that are always gonna be, that are gonna change. I, I think our reliance on technology is, is, gonna, is gonna continue to grow. We just had approved by our board a new strategic plan. And as a part of a, a, a very long process of going out into the community and finding out what they, they thought we needed, we learned some things about what we weren't doing well. And we are identifying those as organizational competencies, things we need to improve on. And one of those was being technologically mindful. At the time, people were thinking, what on earth is that? And I don't get any of those questions anymore because people know exactly what it means. How do I exploit the potential of this tool online to make my life better? And I, I think we're gonna be doing that. It's a very different kind of thing. And I, I think there's gonna be some good parts and there's gonna be some challenging parts still ahead. And Dr. we're not really sure yet what the new normal is gonna be. No, it's yet to be seen. Right. Dr. Dr. Kurt Ewan, thanks for being here today. Dr. Shante Grays, have a great uh, spring 2021 semester. And thank you for joining us on the topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. Remember, if you're looking to register, register now. hccs.edu slash now is the place to go. We'll see you next week on the topic. Mm -hmm.